Uh, hey, good for you, huh? Yeah. A Critics' Choice Award that you have, actually got invited to, or we we got invited to it. One we were nominated. And we won. To? You won. Nominated and won. We won. What was well? The wait, no, we don't, you don't win a Critics' Choice Award. You you become the Critics' Choice. That's how they announce it. They say, and For the Critics' Choice is what it's. What, what's welcome the category? To Rexham, best documentary. What best sports documentary? Best sports in documentary. the world. I, is it in the world? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say there was there were there was a few that were not English language. So maybe yeah, there was one French one. There was one that was mostly in. Russian, but that was made by an English-speaking filmmaker. Well, then there you go. There's your answer. One was made by Peter Jackson. He's not an American. No, he's not. You beat Peter Jackson. No, uh, his his movie was more about sport. uh, Was about music. He did the uh, the Beatles documentary, which Mm. was terrific. The Beatles being a band. um, Yep. From originally from Liverpool, Mm -hmm. Uh, they hit the scene in the '60s and Mm -hmm. changed Mm -hmm. the world of music. You know what? Actually. Yes. Okay. I, that. Yes, I have yeah. heard of them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. Yeah. No. You know what I realized, guys? I did not. I accidentally did not grab a cut that cut that cut that mug. I grabbed a David Hornsby original. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, it's fun. That's a great a David one. Hornsby original. Yeah. Yes. He David drew Hornsby that. drew this. Amen. That's uh, that's Kanye yeah. there. Yeah. Riding on the back of that. Prescient. Mm-hmm. Very prescient. Yeah, because he did this. This was basically just like a summary of 2020. Yeah. <laughs> just the, <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> 2020. Yeah, I mean, this is really, it's He's really an impressive. He's a talented artist. He's very is. talented. He's also very territorial of his coffee mugs. There was a big mug for a while in the Mythic Quest offices that just said in bold letters, this mug belongs to David Hornsby. Now, what is that? Is that because he doesn't like other people's lips uh, touching the things that, you know what I mean? Like, is it that? Is it like a it, cleanliness thing? It might be thing, that, that it's like, that's his favorite mug to drink out of. And he's like, ah, oh, I never... Somebody grabs I it. I brought it because I like to drink my coffee out of it so much, and someone else keeps using it. Yeah, it was he didn't a drink coffee. Larger though. size, so maybe he's very particular about the size of mug. Uh, I feel like I ever yeah. see him drinking any, anything out of a mug. Uh, no. What would he be tea. drinking out of a mug? He's not a coffee drinker, tea. right? Tea. He's drinking tea. tea. He That's does it. drink tea. He that feels very. He's been drinking energy drinks recently. I know he's the been, rocks energy. He's been drink. drinking the rocks energy drinks. He mm-hmm. sees the rock, and he's like. That's what I aspire to, uh, you know, clearly based on how he has transformed, um, he's not doing much towards that. Uh, David is always one energy drink away from being the rock. So I well. wish you'd stuck with just one energy. He is always one energy away. From he does seem <laughs> petrified, right? That's a rock sort of. Very oh, good, eh? Very good. So I don't know. Hey, listen, so we've, so. Been, we've been breaking stories all day. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to say I feel guilty. Man. I do feel guilty. I'm going to admit that to you good. guys right. and to the audience. Good, 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 good. Um, good, 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 good. So why don't you tell, tell, tell the audience what you did to us? I've been out of the writer's room for a full day and a half. Um, a two days, time. effectively. Effectively two days. What time did you guys get in there today? 10? Uh, I was there by 8.30 10. in the morning. Oh, all right. Yeah. So yeah, almost a full day. Uh, so I've missed almost two days. Um, I had to do some traveling for some, this other show that I do. Um, so I want to say that I, first off, I appreciate you all for mm. for, for putting in the work. Um, and all I can do is promise you that when I go, when I get back in there, I'm going to do my best. You know what the worst part for. is? I didn't even notice you were gone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, was it more was it more pleasurable or was it just sort of smoother just sort of like easier. everything just felt easier smoother less volatile so like, yeah like <laughs> the ideas were better the ideas like, were better you didn't have that thing constantly where you're like you you keep hearing this terrible idea and you have to like redirect the room like, right and your whole that? the side that it's coming Who from gets that? tense mm-hmm. somebody putting in the no butts Mm. Yeah. No, very untrue. Very untrue. It's uh, always no, great just, to have you. Uh, you know what it's like. You know what it's like being in that room. It's, it's hot. Just the yeah. Room. Yeah. Just well, and it. I think we're. I think we're just getting warmed up too, right? We're we're, we're getting warmed up. It first, takes a second, first right? Story is always going. the hardest. Now, first did you guys story. break a story? That was the plan you were going to work yeah, we on. Are, that. You did. We are mid story. We're, we're amazing. We're, we're we have a loose, a very loose. Yeah. Very loose break that uh, uh, I think it'd be great to have yeah, fresh yeah, eyes on. Exciting. Need to dig in and flesh out some more, but um, I mean, we look, do I, have a lot of good ideas. We haven't really talked about the the room yet on, on the podcast. Yeah, for this most recent season, we have a lot of note cards up there. A yeah. lot of really great ideas. True, um, um, more than I thought we were going to have. Yeah. Um, yeah. If I'm honest, um, I was I I went home after that first uh, day, or maybe it was after the second day of us just kind of blue skying, and uh, I told Jill I was like I. 
I, I think we've got some really good ideas this this I year. I feel like we felt fresh this year because it's been a minute since we've all been in the room. So is, that, felt, is that what it was? Maybe. Maybe a, little, a little fresher? It's a nice room. Like the room itself is like a big old window and it feels like... Mm-hmm. Uh. <laughs> This episode, Extreme Home Makeover. Oh, my God. Well. <laughs> this, this episode is crazy. It's this insane. episode is crazy. Crazy. So I set us up with some information yes. structure. Yeah. Okay. Season 4, episode 12, The Gang Gets Extreme Home Makeover Edition, aired on November 13th, 2008, was written by Charlie, Glenn, and David, and directed by Fred Savage. In this episode, the gang realizes they must help others to achieve their dreams, so they redecorate a poor family's home a la Extreme Makeover Home Edition. The only problem is that the family is not in on the plan. <laughs> um, yeah, we neglected to yeah, tell. Yeah, yeah. But you that's part of the surprise, isn't it? That's part yeah. of the excitement well, of it. It's a, being thrust into a situation where you're like, we're going to, you know, we're going to change. Wasn't the thing your... with the show that people were surprised? Yes, they didn't know they were going to get a home makeover yeah. uh, renovation. Yes. And then they surprised these families by basically like doing it. Like they, with a lot they, of energy. They would, like, take they someone say... out of town and be like, hey, I'm going to, you're going to go visit your grandma. And, I, and they come back and be like, look at your new home. Or, yeah, your kids they say, maybe they know it all. I think they must have known. The difference is they don't surprise them in the middle of the night by screaming and dragging them from the trash bag. Lawrence family. The way that was shot was like insane. Did I was? Yeah, it was shot at a high frame rate. High frame rate. Yeah. yeah, Did the episode? Did the idea come out of the idea of instead of a home makeover, you're doing a home invasion? Like, because that's what it felt like. That scene felt like a home invasion, like a scary home invasion. You know, it was. It was. It was. It was based on you know the idea of wanting to do an extreme home makeover episode, but doing it in the most extreme wrong ex- and extreme possible way, <laughs> like really latching onto the extreme aspect of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's, that would be a slower frame rate, right? To create uh, that steppy feel. No, no, a f- you have to shoot it at a higher frame rates. Oh, mm, I see what you're saying. Up. Shit, Pretty we did sad. whatever Steven Spielberg did when he shot on the beaches of Normandy. Yeah. Hi. 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 <laughs> our DP, everybody. This yeah. is our DP, Sarah. Um, so, like, the shutter angle is smaller, so less light comes in, so you don't get, like, the sort of natural motion of blur that you get with your regular, like, 24 or 23 frames per second. That's what makes it that weird. Yeah. That effect you're talking about, the beaches in Normandy, where it's like... Yeah. yeah. Great. Okay. Thank cool. you. Good Thank to you, know. Sarah. Awesome. Here's what I was trying to remember watching it. Now, I remember some of this was done in Philly, in Kensington. Yeah. Yes. Some of it was done in L.A. Yep. Mm-hmm. But the interior of the house that we're like wrecking and breaking. LA. LA. What, a was a set. That was a set. It was a set, yeah. It was, was on a stage. Was a set. Yeah. It was on a stage. Where was that stage, though? Well, oh, that we were in Culver City. City. The one in, uh, Culver, in City. Culver City. Yeah. Right, right, right. And we, didn't, we definitely didn't bring the family to Philadelphia. <gasps> So like that final reveal shot is two different, two different. Yeah. Oh, we shot, right. We shot we one side in LA and the other. Bus. Yep. It was easier to get a matching bus. Then to get. Then uh, to bring the family there. I guess so. I don't yeah, because, you know, we pay for a hotel room. and But, you know, it's so funny. Like, there are parts of this episode that are a little clunky, like the vision board explanation of why we're doing what we're doing. And then there are parts that are just so damn funny because they're just basic jokes about you wearing shorts. Well, that that's are- the funniest sequence and one of the funniest scenes, I think, in the history of the show. I do remember us talking about that. Obviously, that was a choice we made in the writer's room. That was not an improvised scene, although there is um, improvisation happening in that in the take. Um, but how did I think that- we were just laughing about the funny difference between... Cut-offs and... Those, uh, that look of the cut-off shorts and the versus that, and yeah. the jean shorts. Yeah, but 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 the the whole like widespread thing like what was was that based on the fact that that did I do something like that in the room and we were like oh we should do that on the show like what I don't know I don't remember I'm how trying to lower. justify why you were wearing them I don't know I really don't know my favorite is that you say it's you can't go lower because your shorts and your hips and and your hips yeah but but, but the point is your shorts aren't <laughs> preventing you from doing what you need to it's do it's really funny right so that whole scene. <laughs> Is just about the shorts? Does something else happen? 
Well, it's about the tool belt initially, I think. But the tool um, belt gets stolen. You guys want to watch it? No, but it's before yeah, I'd that. Yeah, like to watch it again. I... Yeah, sure. But I, as, no, it's us putting on the tool belt and then and, and me explaining the tool belt and then you saying, like, that's great, but I want to talk about these shorts. All right, let me ask you a question then. How come you have that awesome fray in your shorts? Well, I that. <laughs> <laughs> that, sir, is because you purchased blue jean shorts. Where okay, I bring stuff, blue jeans and so this is where the, this is where it all works for me. But now the whole scene is not even about jean shorts or home makeovers. It's about Dennis yes. wanting to teach Charlie something, right? Uh, uh, and oh, to be helpful. Yeah, because you've got information that you were hoping to to God he asks you about because you want to share this information with him. Well, you learn things throughout the course yeah. of your life, right? Yeah. You take in certain lessons, you have certain experiences where you, and you build upon them, hopefully to build a better life for mm -hmm. yourself. And I've built a better uh, life for myself when, when it comes to shorts because of the knowledge that I have about the difference between cutting them yourself well, versus buying them. <laughs> and so and, and I'm excited to share that with some, with my friend who also stands to now have a better life. So this is a great example of an actor. It's, it's so, the scene is so stupid. The joke is so stupid, but it's an actor making a choice that's very specific, right? Where you're saying, okay, in my head, I'm, the way I'm gonna perform this is, I, really, I was hoping he would ask me this so that I can deliver this information in a way yeah. that really informs him so that when, so he can, have, he can enjoy this as well. Yeah, probably. Which I, I do wind up doing a few seasons later. Yes. In the oh, pool, in the oh, pool, in the pool. pool yeah. which is that Dennis told me about the shorts. Yeah. That's why I have. Yeah, oh, that's right. That's we, how you we can go so that that, yeah. Why did you cut them so high? Right, way well, higher than mine. I thought you might ask that. See, it limits restriction of leg. I anticipated oh, this. You're gonna get more work done because you got more exactly. Leg. <laughs> well, you sure you don't do a little demonstration on you. Take the tool belt off <laughs> yeah. for a second. Let me, yeah. let me, let me you filling in the gap. Take a wide stance. Take the widest stance that you possibly can. Okay, leg movement. This is as wide as you can. If I'm going wide, and I'm being honest with you, I'm maxing out about here. That's not bad. But check this out. <laughs> you don't want to make go. him feel bad. Go, bad. go. Ho oh! ho! Yeah. The... Any more? That's it, but that's pretty wide, right? <laughs> that is good. You know, that's it, right? And you're not getting that's a high it. ride. Get a high that's ride, better. but the shorts aren't preventing me from doing what I need to do. Okay, can you pause it again? <laughs> Why are you doing now, that? Okay, now, I do remember talking about you're getting this. The, uh, it's Charlie saying, you're not getting the high ride. He said, no, I'm getting the high ride. <laughs> yeah. Now, and Charlie's laughing. Like, look here. He's yeah, like, right. how yeah, yes. I, how can I not be? Right, right. <laughs> he's laughing. But the character could be too. Yeah. Now, why? What is that movement? Why this? Why are you doing that? Uh, well, because because when we were shooting little it, David um, little David Brenty. Little David Brenty. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I did that on purpose, but I do remember when we were shooting it, we were like. It, it, something about having just weird arm movements just made it funnier. Just like having a kind of a strange posture and doing strange things with my arms. So I, I think we were just kind of experimenting with this how to why put a hat on. It's so hard to write because you you pass over very quickly that you need to be able to take a wider stance to work more efficiently, mm -hmm. which doesn't make sense. But it doesn't matter because you just blow past it and like get to the I'm point. Sorry, that, <laughs> I, I can't remember. Is there something in this that happens? I can in explain the scene it. That moves the story forward or not. I can't well, let's find out. Uh, and that's the shorts. So. That's exactly I right, doubt man. it. And see, your shorts, they're holding you back, man. Well, that and your hips. But I gotta tell you, the shorts aren't helping. Uh, this, this is really all good shit. This oh, is like gold. This is. So what are you gonna do next? It's the discovery. Oh, this is what we're gonna do next. Charlie, grab me that propane torch. I'm gonna burn the wall. Oh, uh, you know what? Oh. Let's go at it with the wrecking ball for a little while. Really? It'll be more extreme and kind of awesome. Okay, okay. all right. All right. Yeah. So, uh, so the scene is about establishing that he has a Frank's propane Frank. torch and that he's gonna try these controlled burns. Uh, and, well, yeah. And, and Frank's recording, Frank's recording all it. Which is, and, and that Frank's recording it, which is leading towards that the house is gonna burn down. Mm -hmm. But we, you know, we have a little bit of a runner that we thought in the writer's room about these jean shorts and it winds up becoming the entire scene. The whole scene, and then it comes back at the end because you're like, well, how are we going to end the scene? Well, just back to oh, the yeah. Well, but also, but, but also like the ridiculousness of that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> when you do it the second time, oh, Charlie, just go low. That's, so, that is bad. That's pretty, <laughs> you say it's bad. <laughs> it's just like, what, the way your body's going to I know, it's just weird. Shot up again, Meg? I'd like to see, now, how old are you here? Probably to the, uh, 2008, so 32. 32. Now, how low can you go now? Mm. Can we see? Can we just well, try? Yeah, well, he's the jeans. These jeans are are a little tight for that. Pop them off. <laughs> <laughs> we got we any of those? Separate uh, thing where you Vior 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 shorts? You pop uh, on some Vior 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 Vior
Yeah, we'll pop it in the podcast. All right, right, maybe I'll Jill shoot shoot a video. It's been 14 years since we shot the Extreme Home Makeover episode uh, back in 2008. And uh, we're going to see how low I can go 14 years later because I haven't tested it in a really long time. I have no idea. But, uh, you know, I got something better than cut off jean shorts today. I got my Viore's on, so these are not going to restrict me from doing what I need to do. All right. So here we go. Let's see how low we can go. You know, I don't think I can go any lower than that. Otherwise, I think I'm seriously going to hurt myself. But that's pretty low. That's pretty low. It's weird because I'm not flexible, but I've always been flexible that way. I mean, not flexible by some people's standards, but by normal You can standards. go lower. That's pretty damn I flexible, I can't go lower man. than that. I don't I, think I've I can go lower than that. It's pretty flexible. Way. Yeah. So my takeaway from this episode is like, eh, some of it works, some of it doesn't, but that scene is perfection. Kind of had like a couple of iconic uh, moments and that kind of makes up for all the rest of it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even, I don't, he, even D's broken Spanish is very funny. Yeah. Somebody took a couple years of Spanish in high school. Oh, so. okay. I don't you know, remember? Just off the cobwebs Good. and see if I can fire off. A All right, tell them um, to relax uh-huh. first off because they look a little tense. Okay. And then uh, we're gonna build them a new house mm-hmm. and a new life, mm-hmm. just like on Extreme Makeover on TV. Okay. Okay. Juarez is say a fácil. Su casa es no más. Su vida es no más. Somos extremos. Como la televisión. See? Uh, see. Yes. Ah, see, they get it. <laughs> I still got it. They get it. it. Somos. Yeah. Extremos. <laughs> yeah, America. Notice in my rewatch that Retta is in this episode. Retta, yeah. yeah. Yes. And how did you guys know her? <clears throat> I did, mean, I don't think we no, did. I, I mean, so. I think. She, she probably auditioned. I think Retta just auditioned. Pre- Parks and Rec. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, this was, yeah. She auditioned just. and was really funny and mm-hmm. we hired her and she was really funny in yeah the it's like someone that talented comes in and they're starting they're probably early i'm assuming it was pretty early in her career mm-hmm. uh and you know it's like a no-brainer You're like okay she makes the scene way better yeah. even her just Staring even her looks you. to us as we're discussing yeah, that's why we put so many band. of them in yeah because yeah. her looks were just, great holding you know? on you guys and yeah. then she watches you clearly force somebody into opening a credit card and does it anyway she's like <laughs> yeah, it's not her sure. problem it's not, it's not this, yeah it's not it's, yeah i think a lot of this had to do with us watching apocalypto and loving it because it's a great movie but then talking about it and talking about very specifically that ending the ending to the movie and we were mm-hmm. in the writer's room and we were like that's a pretty fucked up ending and then there was a lot of there was a lot of back and forth as to what well, there were that different meaning. interpretations. There was different right? interpretations. Like, there was the right one and the wrong one. Well, you had the interpretation that that it was what's in the in the episode, right? Yeah. That it's Sorry, like which you, I, I can believe. Can you fill me in on? I never watched it. Oh, what? Apocalypto. I, can you explain? Fantastic. I never watched it either. Oh, it's so good. But what's the end that? Well, after the main character right goes through the most harrowing experience, uh, there's a shot of like these Spanish ships coming and, mm. uh, and- Just to set it up re- even more, the whole movie is about how this one guy is about to be sacrificed. There was like sacrificing slaves to the sun god. And then he was just about to be sacrificed. Um, and there was a, an eclipse and people thought that it was like God speaking to them. Anyway, he escaped and he spends the whole movie trying to escape from his his captors who are just trying to execute him. And it's really just like riveting the entire thing. But then the final shot is he like finally escapes and he gets to the edge of this cliff and he looks out and you see these European ships coming in. So there's two interpretations, which oh, I, see. I think, I think, I think the other one's valid, but I don't think it's true. Knowing yeah, what we know about Mel Gibson. My, my right. sure. Yeah. My uh, initial <laughs> takeaway seeing that was like, Oh, the, the, the death and destruction is still coming. Yeah. And the bigger is, danger. Bigger is yet and to, more danger. Yeah. And you are living in apocalypto existence. Which is, fa- that's valid. That's fair. Like, and, and I remember uh. you you saying that. And I was like, oh, right. That's not the way I, the way I interpreted it. But that'd be interesting. Um, I think based on <laughs> Mel and Mel's <laughs> beliefs and his, and and your long friendship with him. And, and yeah, of how course, like sitting down with Mel having coffee and discussing it. Yeah. But he's, <laughs> he's like a, a staunch Catholic, hardcore Catholic, and believes in. Yeah. And, and, and if I recall correctly, we'll have to look at that final shot, that I think those ships had like crosses on them, I believe. If not, 
the implication is there that they brought Christianity to that part of the world and in, in sure and 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 colonized that region and wiped out most of the culture and people. And I believe what the movie was saying was, "Don't worry, everybody, it's all about to get better." But there's going to have to be some shit that goes down first. A lot of you are going to, yeah, <laughs> perish. A lot of yeah, you are going to perish. We're going to teach you a religion that doesn't sacrifice people. Mm-hmm. But in order to make sure that you learn it, we have to kill lots of We're yeah. going to have to slaughter the like ones who get in our way. Directly yeah. and indirectly with disease. The Always Sunny podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hello, Charlie Day here, local podcaster and brain enthusiast. (laughs) Is your brain making too much noise all the time? Are your intrusive thoughts constantly rattling around, driving you crazy? (laughs) Are they clawing at your productivities and livelihoods? Think there's no answer? You're so stupid. There is. Better help. That's great. Uh, therapy's great. You know, as the world's largest therapy service, uh, Better Help has matched three million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, you know what's great about it? It's affordable. Mm-hmm. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be any simpler. No waiting room, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash sunny. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash sunny. As the holidays approach, we are sponsored in part by Manscaped. Guys, it's never too early to start thinking about holiday gifts, whether they're for friends or for the friends in your pants. Mm, So friends in your pants, you mean like your car keys or house keys or? No, I think he meant uh, testicles. You can make this a season to be jolly with Manscaped. I mean, that's right. Do your little drummer boy a favor and use the lawnmower 4.0 to avoid another silent night in the bedroom. (laughs) Then add in Manscaped's top of the line shower products to have people thinking, all I want for Christmas is you. I can tell you right now that this gift package is a gift for your package and you won't find a better boost of confidence under the tree this year than how your penis looks. Yep. (laughs) Santa cares about his sack. So should you. Look nice when you get naughty and get free shipping. And 20% by going to manscaped.com slash sunny. Yeah, that's right. Get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com slash sunny. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com slash sunny. Manscaped, get your jingle balls ready for the holidays. In this episode, uh... Mac envisions impregnating Danica Patrick while getting drunk in the Sahara Desert on a dune buggy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on a dune buggy. On a dune buggy. But he's very, lying to himself because there's a lot of naked dudes on that vision board, too. Are there? <laughs> Are there? Yeah, there's buff. Well, there's buff dudes. In, oh, well, that's uh, how he envisions. All right. At the time, that was how he was envisioning himself. So, yeah. mm-hmm. He's the buff dude in that mm-hmm. scenario. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, upon but, further reflection, I, it, it could very well be a... What he aspires to. Mm-hmm. Well, working up Danica vision, Patrick. There, where is she known from? Where she's she a race. She's a race car race driver. Race car driver. Drives cars oh. very fast. I mean, what's she, what's she up to why, these days? I don't. I, I don't pay attention to sports. Now, why is it you cannot like? Do people race cars until they're very, very old, or is that something like yeah. like any other sport where you're like, well, after a certain age? Well, I mean, Some, once you're, yeah. when your reflexes start to slow down, you know, you, you, yeah, I, I think it, it becomes more difficult to compete at a certain level. But yeah, do they have like a senior senior tour? <laughs> you <laughs> know, like probably do. Yeah, it seems pretty dangerous. But <laughs> I think they go. I think they go as long as they as long as they can. But there's a reason why. You know, uh, I believe. You know, my dad was a, an airline pilot, and he, I believe. At the time, they they had to retire by sixty. They couldn't work past the age of sixty. But now I think they've increased they it to sixty five. Yeah. I think they push it to sixty five yeah. now, mm. which seems which seems right. Um, you know, because if you can pass People the physical and living uh, longer, and healthier yeah. lives now, yeah. right? Depends she, on the individual. She competed at the twenty eighteen Daytona five hundred um, and the Indianapolis five hundred before officially retiring in twenty eighteen. Ah, 
So she she did drive at the tender long. age yeah. of. Yeah. Well, now she is forty. So I guess she was Young. 36 then. That's the thing. Why, why can't you keep driving at 40? Do you, guys have, do you guys have weird experiences in your 40s where like certain – that a thing. We, we were in Joshua Tree this weekend and uh, we, were, we were climbing rocks and doing that whole thing. And I had a couple of moments where I just like, was like, I shouldn't be doing this. You know, and, and when I was younger, I mean, I, I was a monkey. I would climb anything. Like I, I, I was fearless and – always felt very coordinated and had good like peripheral vision. And it was not hard for me to sort of navigate very, you know, uneven terrain or whatever. I was on some of these rocks and I was, and I was just like, I'm going to fall. I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to die. If I'm, you know what I mean? And I was like, that, that, and I was like, shit, I don't want to get, I don't want to get to that place where I feel yeah. like. It's just like, that's biochemical, man. <sighs> it's just your body being like, Nah. Nah. I, I don't want to be on slippery rocks at any age. <laughs> they're not slippery. That's the thing no, about the rocks in Joshua Tree. They're extremely grippy. I don't know if you've done much climbing in Joshua Tree. But well, let me ask you this. Did you wear a helmet and did you have your kids wear a helmet? No. Yeah. So this is this is what killed. I, I didn't see I don't know anybody what wearing a helmet. I, I, I know. I know. I know. But you got. I know. What kind of climbing are you talking about? You just go it's, up like a little pile of rocks? No. no, no you're no. you're scrambling up some face. serious. Wow. I mean, we weren't quite doing that, but we were we, we were in situations where you know what? I actually, this is what I said to Jill. I, I I actually don't think, and I'm not totally sure about this, but but what it actually felt to me like as I was getting dizzy. But I don't think it was actually because I was worried about myself falling. Falling. It was because I didn't feel like I could fully concentrate on what I was doing because I was afraid my yeah. kids were going to fall. Yeah. And that was making me like disoriented and dizzy because I was like so scared that like my kids were going to slip. And yeah, I never, I wouldn't even think. Yeah. And we, so, you know, the they say thing like is, number we, one, wear a goddamn helmet. Like how many like head injuries? You're so yeah. right. And we had helmets too because we had the kids. But, here, but here's the, here, okay, this is a true parenting concern. Mm. And I would love to hear what the what the creeps and listeners think about this because I don't know what the answer is because I think I don't know if I did the right thing or the wrong thing. My kid Axel was super. We went to Joshua Tree and he just like fell in love. He, for whatever reason, just took to scrambling mm. up those rocks. Yeah, my he kids found a group too. of kids and they just love it and it's so fun. And and so he did it with this whole first day and he had an absolute blast. And I, I went to bed and I was texting with a friend of mine who's a rock climber, like a legit rock climber. And I just said, I had had the most amazing time with my kid. And he's like, did he wear a helmet? And I said, no, he said, absolutely do not let him do that again without wearing a helmet because there's yeah. so many head injuries. It's, it's so common and people die all the time. So the next day I got him a helmet and I was like, put on the helmet. He's like, I'm not wearing the helmet. I'm not wearing the helmet. I'm like, you, ha you have to wear the helmet. I'm not letting you climb up that rock unless you wear that helmet. Puts on the helmet, goes up with a bunch of kids who weren't wearing helmets because I can't control other kids. And I don't know what was said or even if anything was said, but he was like humiliated by the whole thing. Yeah. Hasn't gone back since. Won't do it. He's just like, I won't do it. I won't do it. I, and, and I get it. Yeah, totally. So what yeah. do you do? You don't want to be the the I one know. nerd in the helmet, no, right? I get, I get it don't too. Look, kids. I wrote my book. Don't have kids. That's one answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's one that's answer. Good. That's fair. That's good. Good that's for the fair. planet. Yeah. Um, I mean, I rode my bike everywhere. Never wore a helmet, man. No, I don't need to die. As a kid, a no. Got to wear a helmet. You should wear a helmet. Caitlin almost died when she was a kid you know, yeah. she, on a bike accident. I yeah. know, but if you die, you die. Yeah. That's callous. <laughs> well, that's easy. Uh, no, no. But if you die, you die. That's on you. Like right. you, yeah. you, you can make it, but dies. it's your kid. Yeah. That's, uh, that's yeah. No, it's, it's looking uncool in front of your friends is worse than death uh, when you're that age. Agreed. So, agreed. And so that... they shouldn't be responsible for it. But as a parent, how do you weigh those things? Well, do I want my kid to not look cool or do I want him to live? To well, live. the answer is I want him to live. But <laughs> now I've taken away his passion for something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think I think the 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 problem is like, I mean, if you, when you go snowboarding or skiing or whatever, you know, ninety percent of the people are wearing now helmets. It, now it's, it's hit critical mass. Yes, yeah, because it, so many people were fucking dying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, in, in popular think, culture, yes. You just keep bringing him back and be like, no, we're going back to the place that you really enjoyed. And you're climbing, and you're, bitch. And you're climbing, and you're wearing a helmet. You're climbing, nerd. You're climbing <laughs> with your nerd helmet on. That's right. And if someone calls you a nerd, you know what you do? You beat the shit out of them. No, you know what? You, know you what? push them down the rock and they're not wearing a helmet. 
<laughs> oh, so she has a hearty laugh. Yeah, yeah. Mara may have done that. Mara, like, Mara may have done that. I did that. <laughs> I did that once. It worked. You know, just pitch never said anything. Live, like, yeah. maybe, <laughs> maybe you can have him lean into it. Wear like a full evil Knievel outfit. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. So it Give actually cool looks cool. Outfit. So it like yeah. looks like yeah. he's doing it and on a purpose. Cape? Yeah, with a fucking ca- oh, yeah. a cape. Hell yeah. Uh, I have a question for you. Are you exhibiting a similar behavior to him of always wearing protective gear when you do dangerous things? I did. I wore I wore a helmet like to show solidarity. And then yeah. he was like, well, now my dad's a dork too. Oh, that's true. And I was like, dude, well, trust that, me. I'm not a dork. Ask anybody here. <laughs> Ask anybody here. He was like, dad, you're the fucking worst. I'm like, yeah, I know. Dad, you're the fucking worst. He didn't say that, but I inferred it. They didn't have a problem on, on they, we, we took them snow, snowboarding and skiing, but no problem because everybody else was wearing that, that. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. You know, if everybody at Joshua Tree was climbing rocks and wearing helmets, it wouldn't be an issue, would it? Uh, but you're absolutely right. We, I, I mean, no, not a single person that I saw scrambling rocks was, uh, was wearing a helmet. So it didn't even occur to me. I don't yeah. know why. Did you guys do any, Charlie, you said you rode bikes without helmets. Did you do any extreme things when you were younger that looking back on it, it's like, how did I ever survive that thing? Oh, yeah. So many stupid uh, tons, things. Like, yeah. Tons. Yeah, but it was a different time. Climbing, climbing. It was climbing more dangerous time. And, you know, yeah. Just dumb, oh, yeah. With no, you know, like barefoot. Uh, no, <laughs> definitely no helmet. Yeah, you know, it's just uh-huh. like dumb shit, like on acid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, a lot just, of things, doing a lot of stupid things. Stupid while stuff. Stupid. And, yeah, stupid, yeah. stupid. Yeah. Have you ever done any home renovation stuff? Have you uh, swung a sledgehammer and oh, knocked yeah. down a wall? Dude, have speaking you ever of done stupid, that? like my my buddy's dad uh, used to have these like apartments uh, in Newport, Rhode Island, and um, he gave me a job one summer uh, repainting them, <clears throat> and this guy puts a ladder up three stories high, right? So there's first floor, second floor, third floor. He ties the ladder to like fire escape. And he's like, uh, this guy, Mr. Merkel, he's like a drill sergeant in the army and like a principal, awesome guy, love him, great family. You're like, all right, Charlie, you're gonna go up that ladder and just scrape the paint off the top of the roof. Now to get to the top of the roof, you had to stand at the top of the ladder on one toe. So he was one toe with his body pressed against a building three stories up. Scraping. We weren't wearing fucking helmets. Just scraping away, just scraping paint off this room. I imagine also not wearing masks or eye no. protective No, no, gear, just so all the all dust paint, and just paint. Just, like, yeah, just in breathing it in. What happens if you fall? He's like, grab the ladder because the ladder will fall, but then it'll hit the fire escape and you won't go all the way to the ground. <laughs> you got it, Mr. Merkel. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Merkel. Uh, and I just, I was that house. I mean, it was the worst paint job ever and he had to redo it <laughs> oh my it was good, like, so you risk joke. your life for no reason at all then oh, yeah, you risk it for like 20 bucks a class, you know, a classy right, guy bucks. you know it's a good four dollars an hour whatever it was, <laughs> was yeah. I mean it, it, I, I, my, my buddy uh, Mark Dunlap and I uh, had a job once when we were 18 years old uh, working at a factory and like doing stuff we had no business doing it. like I, I didn't have any kind of a license I don't know if you need maybe do you need a license to drive a forklift any kind of in a- Alabama? <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. No, I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's I a good point. Know, but right, right. It seems like uh, you guys just did whatever the fuck you wanted down there. Well, we sure as hell did. So, yeah. You know what? Because there's a lot of freedom down yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of fucking freedom down there. Uh, but uh, yeah, driving forklifts and you know working with like toxic materials and like having to wear like gas masks to to because it was like, all kinds of toxic dust and shit like so many areas that were like flammable we were fixer, fixing machines that we didn't even know what they were or how to fix them we were, i was like what is this and getting paid 525 an hour <laughs> i remember mm-hmm. it, I, I remember because it was a dollar over minimum wage which at the time was 425 nice. at least in, in in alabama it was I, I think that was the federal minimum wage i wish I, uh, more, I wish i knew how to do more of it like uh you know on my Handyman stuff. Yeah, yeah. one of my yeah. closest friends, Chris, like is you know has a construction company in Rhode Island and uh, uh, Pettit Construction. If you want a good job done in Rhode Island, but like you know he he knows how to like go ahead and build a deck or an entire house or redo your kitchen. Like what an awesome thing to but also, like, the, know the, how to do. The balls on on the characters of of Dennis and Charlie to think they can just renovate a home. And they don't know yeah. shit. Yeah. They don't know anything about what they're doing. They just start breaking the place. And then, yeah. you know, like, Wait, what? So, so the show was called, the original show was called Extreme Home, the Extreme Makeover. Mm-hmm. And then, and that was about, that was a show where they would take somebody and 
carve them up and give them plastic surgery and whatnot. No, they yes. plastic that was surgery. The swan. You're thinking of the swan. Oh, well, that, that's... They turn you from an that, ugly duckling into a swan via plastic surgery. Amazing. Is that right? I'm looking I, up extreme makeover I, depicts ordinary men and women undergoing extreme makeovers involving plastic surgery, oh exercise regimens, hairdressing. Well, otherwise, it ain't wardrobe. extreme. If it's just a little makeup and hairspray, that's, that's not just a makeover. They added a home element to it? And then they just, yeah, they did the home makeover thing. Um, and it's hard, it's hard to explain to a, the, anybody who would say, watch this episode now, a young person watching mm -hmm. this episode now, that would think, oh, this is, they're talking about some show that exists, or maybe they're making it up or whatever. When those kinds of shows would come out, they would be smash hits, and you couldn't get away from them. They would mm -hmm. be... The, the, there wasn't as many channels. There was no streaming. It was, mm -hmm. and it, if, if there was a hit on ABC, yeah. it was massive. And that guy, Ty Pennington, mm -hmm. like you, you would see him at like a v TV events and he would be the star that yeah. was there. Mm -hmm. And you would, th you would think, well, this guy's career is just like never gonna, it's, he's gonna be Ty Pennington for the rest of his life. And he is. Well, but, he is gonna be Ty yeah, Pennington yeah. for the rest of his life. Well, I was talking about that with the show where it was like, you took someone's like, one story, one bedroom house, and turn it into a five bedroom mm -hmm. story house. Are they going to have to pay a crazy new tax bracket because the house is valued at a different? Uh, like, how's that work? How's no. money work? No, <laughs> it, you're still <laughs> how, paying how taxes. How taxes and money work? You want another shit? <laughs> <laughs> I do remember watching that show and, th and and thinking it was so funny how they would, you know, they be talking to the kid and the kid would be like, you know, like, what are you, what are you into? You know, what's little Johnny into? You know, oh, he really likes sharks. And, oh, sharks, huh? Okay. And then, you know, they oh, would yeah. do the makeover and the house would be, you know, classy for the most part. And then you'd go in the kid's room and it was just like, and it's a shark bed and there's shark posters everywhere. And there's a fish and there's a, you know, a, a, a giant poster of sharks. And it was just like, yeah. oh, okay. I mean, he said he liked sharks. He didn't think he, yeah. he's he didn't say he's, and then like, uh, you know, five years, he's going to be 15 and we're going to have to, <laughs> redo all this shit. shit. Yeah. In like yeah. five minutes, he's going to be on to something else. Yeah, it's like yeah, kids yeah. are. It's right. like, yeah. huh? oh, he made like the whole sharks. thing about sharks. Yeah. You know, my kid's sleeping in a shark's mouth. Who wants to do that? Yeah. Like, so that was, that was, and we never, we didn't quite, we weren't able well, to that's quite what dig the taco into, bed was but supposed that was, to be, but it wound up. Yeah. So I know somebody that, wet, well, I won't say his name because it'll, it'll betray his trust, but we all know him. And he worked on, he worked in a, a, some of these kinds of shows. And he said the biggest moment, the whole episode oh. is based on the <laughs> reveal. The whole episode is based on the reveal. So no matter what happens, if you don't get the right reveal, you don't have a show. So knowing that the producers would do all sorts of fucked up things. They wanted people to cry really more than anything. So they would keep them awake. <gasps> like they would purposefully like keep them awake for 48 oh, hours. 48 to, hours? To, to make them emotionally unstable which I guess would work where they would, but they would hide it. Like they would put them in a hotel and they'd be like, you're going to this party and then we're going to go out and here's a bunch of alcohol. And then they would like come and wake them up at like in the middle of the night and be like, we got to do this one thing and then go back to, and then wake them up, like really fuck with them. And then when they showed up, they would be emotionally drained and then they would see, they would have the reveal. And So not that different from what we do on the show, except they, at the end of the day, they've got a nice house instead of a burnt down we, we, were, uh, we were satirizing them. lots of things in this in this episode, I believe, mm -hmm. including those shows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a good bit in this episode that I'd like to bring up too, where Dennis is comforting Charlie, and you do a little bit of like, do you remember that part where you're like uh, massaging? I'm, I'm his, upset about Sears. And, yeah, yeah, and you start massaging his shoulders, and then you give him a nice hug a little from hug at behind. the end. Yeah, yeah. It's a sweet little moment. Just breathe for me. Feel what I'm doing. Yeah, dude, I just, I, I'm sorry, bro, but I get very passionate about Sears. No, I, I mean, ex extreme homemade, I mean, what, what? Helping people. Helping people. Shh, 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 shh. Don't stop. Yeah. Yeah. I do actually remember I was, I was doing the massage thing and I gave you the hug and I was like, this is nice. It's like you were very warm and like a good <laughs> side, like good hugging size. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, like the whole thing with that was like, uh, <laughs> The episodes were always like about Sears. It was like yeah. so much about Sears. Yeah. Right. It was about them. Yeah, about the yeah. So generosity. Like you're like, you're kind of helping a family, but really it's just like one long commercial for Sears. Yeah. But I love that and you that also like, say, Sears doesn't get anything out of it at yeah. some point. Like yeah, fundamentally yeah. misunderstanding yeah, yeah, yeah. why <laughs> they mentioned it all the time. Did we, I feel like that was at the very beginning where we're like, wow, they're like just like putting this advertising right in the middle of the content, which of course now is just all that anything is. Speaking of, let's go to commercial.
Guys, we're supported by Athletic Greens and their delicious green powder, AG1. A product I use literally every day. Wait, Meg, ma- are you using AG1 every day now? Yeah, wait, are you? Yeah, I've been using AG1. Wait, did you know that it has 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to start your day right? I sure did, Charlie. I figured. Yeah. Listen, I'm very happy to hear that you're using it all the time. I mean, it means... We successfully converted her with our expert salesmanship. But then do you guys remember how I literally brought them to you as a sponsor? In the Okay, beginning? okay. Then why don't I? you uh, name a selling point you love so much about Athletic Greens and AG1? Yeah. Well, there's less than one gram of sugar. That's pretty good. And okay. it supports better sleep quality and muscle recovery and, you know, all the things you guys all know. The, all the things that we normally say. All the things we normally say about that it. we've okay. been saying. Yeah, yeah. Say that's not- yeah, I mean, <laughs> we got her. Yeah, but do be like Meg and start taking AG1 every day. Your body will thank you. All right, to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash sunny. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash sunny to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, guys, let's be honest. We could all use a little more motivation when it comes to working out. And by that, I mean, you know, some competition. Charlie, what kind of competition are you talking about here? I'm talking about Fight Camp Interactive at-home boxing. They bring the best workout in the world into your home, and they make it fun for any skill level. Ah, Fight Camp, where you have thousands of workouts led by expert trainers with decades of experience teaching proper boxing form and technique. Yeah, that's right. And and more importantly, you have live punch counting stats that push you to meet your goals each round. You'll not only unlock achievements so you can compete with yourself, but you know, you can go head to head with other members so you can compete with anyone, whether they're across the living room or across the country. So join the biggest boxing community in the world without leaving your home. All right. This holiday season, you'll also get a, a, a heart rate monitor and a premium jump rope for free. All right, that's an additional $148 value for free. Fight camp packages start at just 99 bucks. They also offer some great financing options so you can get started for as low as $9 a month. To get started and to get your free gifts with purchase, go to fightcamp.com slash sunny. That's fightcamp.com slash sunny. You guys believe in manifesting? Do you think that do. there's anything do, to the yeah. secret? And if you, I do. Yeah, yeah. I do. I'm, I'm, but I don't think it's as woo woo as I think the general public. Yeah, the, I, I, I mean, think it's another I think way of just could, saying having a goal. Yeah, you know? having like, a goal and positive thoughts. And positive and, thought. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I think it affects. It, I, I think people pick up on your energy, and I think when you put something out into the world, you're putting a certain energy out, and people pick up on it. It affects how you approach your work. It affo- uh, affects how you approach your goals. You know, and I think so. I think there's probably some very like tangible science behind it, as opposed to it just being totally woo. But uh, I feel like uh, manifesting things absolutely, absolutely works. I mean, I tried to get on your show for eight years. It took yeah. me of manifesting that. Did you? And did you? Did talk, him, you did it. I did it well. The the direct link was that I talked about it all the time, and I talked about <laughs> it to somebody who was on your show, who then went and was like, "This chick's obsessed with you. <laughs> like, why don't you guys interview her?" That was Scott Martyr. <laughs> but I wrote my spec script that got me my first job was a sunny spec, so I was manifesting it. Have we? Have Have I read that spec? Oh God, no! You're not going to either. No, no, no. <laughs> no. What if we produced it? No. Yeah, what if we no. use it this season? What if I were to tell you, <laughs> you know, we got nothing. So <laughs> what if we did an entire season of television where we just did people's spec scripts that they send sent in? Finally, the bar rescue episode. The bar rescue episode is a lock. I think what we've learned today is don't do a podcast at the end of the day after breaking stories. Mm, what do you it's think? tough on the energy, but... I don't know. I don't know. I, I, we, there's, there's some good content in there, some interesting conversations. Look, I mean, you know, if people want to see the real us, they're, every once in a while they're going to get a podcast that was filmed at the end of the day and the energy is going to be maybe slightly different. And, you know, maybe that's... Uh, we didn't complain. No. no I'm, on a, I'm on a different time zone. I'm three hours... It's yeah. three hours later, but I haven't yeah. really You adjusted that. to the time zone that quickly? Mm-hmm. You weren't gone that long. No, but I did get up early and I was, I was on a six hour flight, mm. but I'm not complaining. Mm-hmm. It's all good. No, I've got a, I got a great life. Get to spend it with my friends. You know, well, we've established if you want to complain, you can. 
Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I don't really feel like complaining. I feel very happy. I feel very fortunate. No, I feel good too. It's, Megan, you know, it's like, uh, do, you, do you feel like uh, overall you, you walk around life uh, I, with a general sense of gratitude? I try to, yeah. yeah. Right, so you aspire to that. Aspire you don't, you don't feel that. like that's your default, but you I aspire to I think I'm happy all the time about everything, but... No, I not happy. Not happy. Yeah, with grateful. gratitude, yes. Um, but, you know, you only really, like, appreciate how good you have it when stuff starts going, like, badly. So, like, during the pandemic and stuff, I found a lot more gratitude about my life. And just, Same. like, yeah. It just I would say I found more gratitude about my non-work life. Uh, mm -hmm. which I'd always thought sucked. I always love, have tons of grat gratitude for my work life because I get to do really fun things and that's cool. But then I was like, you know, it's great just like going for a walk or like just hanging out with some friends. Mm -hmm. And like you start being more gracious about, m more grateful about stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I would say, yeah, I'm happy to be back in the room with you guys right now. Yeah. Rob yeah. said he noticed Enjoy. I was in a good mood the other day. So I did. I, I I noticed you seem very happy. Yeah, I am very happy recently. Which I, I, I this, love to see. I'm having a lot of fun in the writers' room. I'm Me too. Really yeah. enjoying it. Yeah, it has been fun. It's a blast. It has been fun. Um, we have now completed watching all our episodes of season, season four. four. Oh, this is we are going to air. I think the Nightman one last. We'll we'll yes. air that one last, but we don't We're have a conversation about season oh, yeah. four as a That's whole true. during that. Uh, That's true. Yeah. What so, What are your thoughts about season yeah, how's four? How's everyone feeling? I, I, I'm, I'm you thinking know, four was strong. I, I I like I like it, but to be honest, for my money, the show becomes, I think, what I love about it the most in season five. Yeah, I think we're about to kind of pick up on all the things that work and dump all the things yeah. that are like we don't really need, like realizing, oh, we don't need these aspects of storytelling yeah. to break one of these stories. A lot of justification. A lot uh -huh. of justification yeah. we don't need and just be like, no, we're just like the characters are just doing things. Yeah. And the audience will go with it starting season five. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think we, I think we just, it was the first year that I feel like we really dialed it in and, you know, sort of took what was working um, from all the first four seasons and mm -hmm. combined it all into one show. Um there's some pretty classic episodes. I've said this before on the podcast, but my favorite is The Gang Gives Frank an Intervention, and that is in season five. So that I'm very is in season five. Yeah. Great episode, guys. 